When I look around, everything I see is transitory. In a few years, things will change. In a few billion years, the sun will go red giant and the earth itself will be vaporized. So everything I can experience in the external world is transitory. It's going to change. If I look inside myself, I see physical, emotional, and mental sensations. If I'm walking, I feel pressure on my feet. If I'm lying in bed, I feel pressure on my back. My physical sensations change. My emotions change. I'm happy, I'm sad, I feel blah, whatever. My mental sensations change. I might be thinking about what I had for lunch yesterday and later thinking about what I'm going to have for lunch tomorrow. I can imagine things. I can follow a mathematical proof. I can invent things but if I try to write, write a novel. But all those sensations are transitory. The question is, is there anything which is not transitory? And I'm talking about in this world. There are speculations about an afterlife in heaven or some other place or reincarnation, but I'm talking about this world right now. Is there anything which is permanent? If there is, we can call that the real using a capital R. Now everything I experience that's transitory is real with a small r. That tree, that car, this desk, my body are all real, but they're not permanent. So they're not real with a capital R, if you will. And there are people who make it one of their life's goals to come to know and experience what is real, what is eternal. Now, of course, there might not be anything eternal, but they hypothesize that there is, they have a belief that there is, and they try to experience it. Those people who try to experience ultimate reality, or real with a capital R, are called mystics. Now the word mystic and mysticism, those words are often used to refer to um, auras and crystal healing and um, the tarot cards and uh, palm reading even. But I don't know anything about those things and I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is people who try to have a direct experience or a more intimate relationship with what they take to be ultimate reality. Now, the real, with a capital R, could be called God, but it's not the normal idea of God. The normal idea of God is God as some person who lives outside the universe. In Christianity, you have our Father who art in heaven. Father, God is a person-like entity has desires, has wishes, loves some things, hates other things. And this person who has all these personal desires and wishes lives outside the universe in heaven. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about what is real and permanent and is the basis of everything we experience. There are some religious and philosophical systems that have that idea of God. There is Vedanta, a Hindu philosophy, which has the idea of Brahman. And Brahman is what underlies the entire creation. In the Neoplatonic system of Plotinus, there was the One, which underlied all creation. There's Taoism. In these systems, God is not some person who lives outside the universe. God is the very fabric of existence. And there's a rather simple way to imagine this. When I dream, let's suppose I dreaming, I'm dreaming that I'm in college again, and I have my, the body of a 20-year-old, and there's my friends, and there's my car I had, and there's the dorm I lived in. In the dream, the car is not made out of metal and glass and rubber. 
it's made out of my mind stuff, my thought. As is all the people I see in the dream. As is the dormitory I see in the dream. As is my 20-year-old self that I see in the dream. That's all my mind stuff. There is one thing underlying everything in the dream. And that is real, in a sense, with a capital R. Because the figures in my dream are real to me when I'm dreaming. But they're not as real as the mental processes which create them. I'm lying in bed, and in the normal way of thinking, in the real world, my thoughts are real. But what I imagine and what I dream are, in some sense, unreal. The idea here is that God is like the dreamer, and the universe is like the dream. So the mystic, or at least some mystics, aim for direct experience of the real. Now, what do I mean by direct experience? Well, that's simple. I can think about electricity. I can learn about electricity. I can go to college and learn about Maxwell's equations that describe electromagnetic phenomena. But direct experience of electricity is touching a wire. That's direct experience. Everything else is thoughts about electricity. Similarly, theology can talk about the real, the one, the basis of all that we see. But to actually experience it is direct experience. Now, in a sense, we're experiencing it every second because that's all there is on the ultimate level. That's the permanent, which underlies all the transitory. So in a sense, we already are experiencing it, and that's what we are. Just like in the dream, my 20-year-old 20, 20 self is my thought. That's what creates all the people in the dream. But those people aren't aware of that. They're living in the dream. They're experiencing the dream car, the dream dorm, the dream people. But if one of them could sit and feel that my thought was their basis, they would be experiencing my thought directly rather than experience it as it manifests in the dream. And the mystic who wants to experience the real, the ultimate ground of existence, that in which everything exists, is the mystic who wants to experience God as ultimate ground of existence. Now, there are certainly the other type of mystics who believe that they want to experience Jesus, and some of them believe they have an experience of Jesus, and he spoke to them or he appeared in a shining light or all that kind of stuff. But that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about doesn't involve any supernatural. It's more of a philosophical thing. If everything that is transitory it lies on a foundation of something that is permanent, the kind of mystic I'm talking about wants to experience that directly and considers that God. Now, if you're interested in this, in this type of experience, if you're interested in this type of view of God or ultimate reality, and you begin to try to have this experience, you've entered the mystic quest. You're on the road. And that's what this video is about. Thank you.